How's everyone doing today? So, we're going to be talking today about uh, why companies struggle with uh, implementing security and technology in general. Just some of the things that I've seen, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like, yep, I've, I've seen that too. Uh, so, you know, I don't want this to devolve into like a, an hour long complaining session So, uh, from, from me, one side. I do encourage you to, uh, if you have, have anything to add, feel free to. And if you can't hear me, tell me uh, to speak up. Um, my name is Tyler Smith. I work for uh, a company called Snapcare. Uh, this crazy person here in front, and uh, the guy in the back, all the way in the back, against the wall. Get back to you sometime, you know, like in a year or so. I almost never look at my Twitter feed or cyber.it, uh, which is a great site if you're not familiar with it. It's free uh, training that is security focused. Uh, and it's, it's decent stuff, so, so that's worth checking out. Um, I served in the military uh, for a while. Left and did the security and intelligence thing. Um, so, some of the stuff that I've done in past uh, social engineering assessments, both physical and over the phone, uh, installing different pieces of software, uh, you name it, I've probably done it. Not always to a very high level, but uh, I've at least messed with it generally. Uh, so like I said, um, it's not supposed to be a lecture, it's supposed to be more of a fun, two-way conversation. Seriously, feel free to speak up if you have something to add. Um, uh, yeah, so I will swear, I'm just letting you know right now, I'll try and keep it toned down. Bad when I came home, I swore it's like every other word. Except this, that, that. So I, I have reformed greatly. Uh, if you see a typo, uh, I just put this up here because I, I've only done a few talks, but I used to be an instructor. So I used to have to create PowerPoint presentations, and, and without fail, there'd be a typo, and someone would, would stop everything. That word, I, I before you, but that just that, who cares? Right? Um, That's what this writing comes up. You know, you have a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for pointing that out. See, this is what I'm, I'm looking for that kind of interaction. So, um, oh, it's a uh, let's back it up. So, uh, I apologize for anything on my Twitter account. Yeah, yeah those, are, those, right those opinions are my own, not the opinion of anyone else. Uh, so, <clears throat> everybody, you got, you got it? Cool. All right. So, um, I'll be around all day, so if you want to... Slap me in the face, yell at me, whatever. Go, just, just go for it. If you want to, want to chat? I'd, I'd appreciate that as well. So, um, does anyone have any questions before we get started? Cool. All right. So, why do companies have security issues? I think that this is a question that has a lot of different. Just the sheer complexity 
Extremely rapid pace, and when you tie that in with the budget concerns, the inability to get funding because many places see us as a check in the box, not as the price of doing business, which is what it really ought to be. Uh, you know, security, if you, can't, if you can't do it safely, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, but a lot of people don't see it that way, and I think some of that comes from they just don't understand. Don't understand how quickly you know, their, their entire universe can be turned upside down. You know, someone in accounting clicks on a link in an email, phishing email, and before you know it, you know, to catch up with it, you're re-imaging, you know, 12, 13 computers at a couple of servers uh, because they're infected. And again, anybody has anything? Whatever. Um, now the other portion is: there is. A, does anybody else feel that there's a lack of talent, security talent? Yeah. Sorry. There's a dearth of people. There are very many talented people. Yes. Search aren't enough talent. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's not just security. No. Well. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but you know, I, I particularly find it difficult to find. Place that has all of the security people that you need. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I get to see that uh, anywhere that I've been, you know, and except for maybe some building agencies. Yes? Are there folks coming out with sword skills from the military that are programmed to buy sword? I know that's a, a military problem. Uh, yes. So 
Let me ask you something. Do you, would you or would you not love someone that if you look at them and you say, get this done, and they about face, step off, and do it, and they do it perfectly? I mean, that's, that's what cracks me up, because several people that I've, I've talked to, one of them uh, just left the NSA, he was working in that the NSA uh, for left the NSA, he applied for a job, I applied for the same position, um, he didn't get it, and I did. Uh, and I turned it down. But, um, he was that funny. But, um, I, I couldn't believe it, like, I thought he was going to get it for sure. I mean, you know, the guy literally did exactly what they wanted uh, from out of this role. Literally did that for the NSA. You know, he, he was working with technology and techniques that were at the pinnacle of security. Uh, some things I'm sure he couldn't even talk about, but he was bringing that to the table. And because they, they literally, I talked to him after the fact, and he was like, he was like, yeah, they, they just they said that I didn't have any corporate experience. And they thought that would be there for them. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, is this a general issue of the lack of people who can really understand systems and how things work think outside the box? So um, it depends on what role we're talking about. Um, analyst roles, you know, take a certain kind of people. Engineering roles, take a certain kind of person. Um, architect, the, the other kind of person. And I kind of see it as different stages in, in, in your career life cycle. Uh, you know, if the best people have that analyst background, move on to the engineering, and then move on to the architecture uh, side of things. And, and you know, as you as you go, you have the ability to look back and see, okay, you know, I'm an engineer, this is what the analysts are gonna have to be able to do. But the problem is a lot of people are going in there. And the degree, for whatever, I'm not really that certain, uh, but the degree that they're getting is, uh, according to some, is outdated. Uh, it's the technology, uh, the issues that are highlighted are not really a problem anymore. And, and I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what I've heard. But the, I think the issue is, you know, it's difficult to find that person that has I've heard it said that it's a lifestyle, it's more so than anything, because it changes so fast that you have to be, you have to be motivated to keep up with it. Uh, if you really want to be, to be good, I mean, you know, you can come in, you know, punch your ticket, sit down, work with your system, uh, or sit maybe a handful of systems, punch out at the end of the day, and go home. But, you know, in order to really be an asset, being able to understand how what you're doing ties in with what the rest of the team is doing, and even people outside the security team, what they're doing. Being able to see that full picture, I think, is where um, people, you know, they just, it's a lack of ability. Uh, they just want a job that pays a lot of money, and they see security as that. It's definitely a talent shortage. Is definitely something that is going to have to be reconciled and dealt with at some point in time. Because yeah, you pick up stuff forward. I mean, conferences like this or other larger <laughs> ones that get at least you pop some presentations and all that. We're seeing the end results being communicated to us. We're not seeing all the, the hours of prep and or years worth of prep. And yeah, exactly.
Yeah, you're right. You can usually go to the conference and sit down and watch some guy uh, take over. Uh, you know, I remember watching Raphael Bunch take over uh, an Android system and just being like, holy crap, that, that, that was awesome. And, you know, I mean, I realized that there was a lot that went into that. You know, he'd been researching that probably for about six months, I think, is what he said. Um, but, you know, I don't think that's the thing that people take away from it. I mean, I know I certainly didn't get to think about that too much. I was just like, that was awesome. <laughs> he did these things, and then he took over this phone, this tool. And, yeah, I mean, people come to conferences and they don't realize that they're going to I mean, I spent like a year stopping. And I didn't go out partying or anything. I just literally had to go to work. do things in my lab at home. Uh, you know, set up a firewall at the time to, to you know, that kind of simple stuff. And uh, that was that was you know my thing. It's like the passion is what drove me not to take it. Um, and I knew I knew it was gonna be different. It's often overlooked. Um, so why why is it that when you have a project that you're working on, uh, or has anyone changed from one company to another recently? Yeah. So when you got the next company, did you keep see things that were going on, and you're just like, I really don't know why you're doing this. Policy or the technology that they chose, or um, maybe maybe did maybe didn't. Um, I get I, I had the benefit of as a consultant getting to work at a bunch of different companies, uh, and so you know it, it becomes apparent very quickly, you know where the issues lie at different companies. Um, the one thing that is One thing that I do that I do like that is, you know, gives me some some ray of hope is everybody is taking it pretty seriously. Um, which, when I started as an analyst, was not necessarily the case. It was more of a, oh well, yeah, we gotta have these guys around to do this, whatever it is that they do, which I don't understand. But yeah, we have to pay for. And now it's more of a, uh, yeah, you know, we, we should probably take care of some of the issues that we have. Uh, it's, it's, it's headed in the right direction. At least that's my having, having been to four or five different companies in the last few years. Uh, so I can't really remember. Anything, but, but the company's taking it more seriously. Things that I hate, right? And, and it's funny because if we really, I think, take a step back and just take it to an agnostic group um, and say, okay, well, instead of buying something, what do you have that you can use today? And then layer it in. And, and it, that, I say that much to the dismay of, of 
my sales team, right? Because it's trying to generate the sales. But I'm trying to build a long term relationship and say that we're more than a one one pony show at the end of the day. And let's take a look and see. Can we build that trust gradually? <laughs> so I, I think you know, all those your technical pieces, what you're talking about, you know, from, from that perspective, for the guys that really understand and which is an entirely another conversation, which is mobile sports because when you look at academically what we're trying to push from a, a degree perspective, a lot of good concepts, a lot of good stuff, not enough hands on. Right? Not putting them into a, a lab and say, okay, I want you to most basic thing, set up a window server. Great. Now, here are base set of settings. This is where you would normally go to set this up. I want you to set it up in a way that I can't go through and say, okay, I'm going to make myself local admin. Right? And, and try to teach them that way with hands on. Because, and I've seen, I think everybody's seen it. Because a lot of the kids come here in college these days, they think it's easy. They want the $50,000, $60,000 paycheck right out of the gate without having the true experience of creep. And it hurts, right? It, it, it hurts all of us as a whole. Because, you know, somebody in America is going to buy it. <laughs> They're going to say, wait a minute. You really don't know as much as you, you know, you know? And then you get back to that paper tiger skin thing. You know, I've got the service, I've got the credits, but I don't have the experience, right? The whole, um, you know, you know, this, you know, the Microsoft certification factory thing, right? At the end of the day, but it's, it's you know, that, at the end of the day, it feels like a lot of it. It's, it's the push button mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. and the way it's being sold. There's too much information that's happening that sector. From an industry perspective, because everybody's going to the dark reading. Everybody's going to CNN. Everybody's going to all these great, big, you know, uh, uh, servsecurity.com websites, seeing the latest, greatest pay to play tools that are out there, right? And, and, and I'll throw this out there. I, I actually work for Symantec. I could have talked a lot of people. I'm not, I'm not going to sell you a product. You need to talk about a solution. You won't be back today. Right? And so, and, and I think that plays into almost every part of what you're starting to get into. Is, you know, where you know, we're very complex. We don't have a lot of money. You know, our project management mistakes. You know, at the end of the day. And it's trying to get them focus. I think of what really the issue is. What's your goal? What do you want to do? You know, are you wanting to test servers? Oh, great. What service of devices are you using? Have you gone out and looked at the midget stuff? Have you tried to study? Have you gone and looked at some of these other resources that are great out there that, yeah, if you want to get down, you're not going to be able to access it. But take a track and have a focus and what really works for you at the end of the day. Right? What can I enable you to transact your business as securely as possible so that you can make the most money possible? You know, and, and that I think that's the hard part that a lot of, of management, IT management, as well as you know. I go home and I play in my lab. You know, I think the majority of us in here, if not all of us, go home and think, oh, that's, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me take a look at that. Does that really work? How can I make it work? How can I break something? You know, at the end of the day, you gain that much more knowledge. You've gotten yourself that much more of an edge. Yeah. But it's so, a lot of soda. <laughs> that's OK. That's, uh, that's yeah. They don't think about, okay, you got to have the body, bodies to monitor this and, and also keep it tuned. You know, so many tools people buy and they think that it's just a magical you know, solution that's just going to fix all their problems. Like my favorite is uh, ELP. Uh, people think ELP is just, oh, they're flying, flying this, this laser. You know, they find all this stuff. Like that, you have to have the gumption to say to management, now look, there might be some mistake oil here. Yeah. 
had the wherewithal to turn their people at a marketing club to say, what are you really going to get for what you're paying? And I, I see that a lot where you know, it, it comes on both sides. Management wants a quick fix, the, the, uh, the tool-centric or solution-centric mm -hmm. mindset. Practitioners, we all have. I want to stick a solution on there without anything to talk behind it. Yeah. yeah. What kind of burden did you get into? Yeah, exactly. I, mean, uh, I, think, I think a lot of that is, has started to come out of, you know, well, we only have this much money to spend. We only have this many sets of eyeballs to watch this stuff. So I think that encourages people to start looking for, well, you know, if you buy our product or our service, That's a great point. I mean, you know, they're, they have they have a big problem. They're, they already have something that worked for them, and they're like, well, maybe if we bring in SharePoint, everything will be better. Like, sure, why not? Uh, you know, we can also take you know a couple hundred thousand dollars off the street and put it on the fire, save ourselves a ton of the agony. Uh, you know, we'll just buy the license and light it on fire. That's like that divorce joke. Instead of getting the thing there, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's a little more pragmatic. <laughs> uh, but um, so some of the things, some of the misconceptions that I see when it comes to getting to that point where they're trying to pick a solution, um, and, and I think maybe I'm giving giving a lot of companies too much credit because uh, they are stretched so thin. They aren't really looking for a solution. What do we buy and install so we can no longer have to worry about this, this issue? Um, so, uh, one of the big things that I think is uh, a problem for that is people look at what they already have and they don't think to improve it. They don't think of, you know, well, maybe there's a better way to do it. And, and even if they start to think that way, one of the things that they do is they stop because, you know, oh, we already have, you know, this in place. Like, we already have teeth and uh, we really want to take all the time to rip it out, install some other thing that will do that for us. Um, you know, and they're like, oh, no, we get pain in the ass. Never mind the fact that you're going to have to Most people's install systems are so old that they already been activated out. You're not going to just upgrade the box. Um, and, and I use that too even as an example because literally a company that I went to did not want to consider anything like this because of what they already had to install. Uh, and the, the one in here, his reasoning was we don't want to take the time to tear, tear this out and put something new in. Trying to explain to them, like, I'm looking at this much, and, and you know, I should be looking at a blue whale, but I'm looking at like, you know, one square inch of it. And they just didn't get it. It's like, yeah, just pull the logs out of Palo Alto and drop the logs and uh, use like uh, pivot tables in Excel to analyze those and then create your new things. It's like, okay, I take the maximum amount of logs I can. At that point in time, it was a little over 65,000. I dumped those into Excel, and that accounts for 15,000. So 
Same thing goes with vendor selection. Well, we already have a relationship with this company, so we're just going to go with this company. It's like, okay, well, this is what I've seen in companies do that. Some, not all the time, sometimes vendors will abuse that existing relationship to engage in some standard of service. Now, that's not how, you know, that's not how a lot of people do stuff. I mean, but there are some companies where priorities have changed. say the magic word of purchase pod or whatever it was. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with creating a little bit of competition. Um, I think it wins uh, dividends for, for the company that is looking for service when you say, well, okay, yeah, that's great. Tell us what you got. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk to you some other been like a staff augment at a client before, and they did not do that because they're like, well, we have a relationship with this, I, you know, this, this vendor, uh, or they're local, so we're going to go with these guys. 
not the best thing, but I have seen it where it's it's almost like they're they're stretching their goodwill. Like you call them up and it's like, yeah, hey, um, we're having a problem getting this license to pay. You know, you guys come help us out. And they're like, oh yeah, sure. We can see if we pencil you in. Just so they know they got you. You'll never leave, you'll never go away. The last three things that you purchased, you purchased from them. And you say stuff like, well, they're already here in house, so we're going to say it's okay. Um, but yeah, so I may be way off basis on that, but I mean, I, I swear I've seen it. Uh, let's see. Um, the other one that I, I really annoying is users will never go for that or it'll make people angry if we do whatever. But we can't block you either because that will piss people off. It's like, well, so would you rather have so-and-so from accounting be pissed off or would you rather have the board pissed off because so-and-so sent the entire client list to some email address in Russia on accident? Or so, you have to see where, where the culpability there lies. If management makes a decision that makes the user body unhappy, management is to blame. If security is breached and things get hacked, well, that's the hacker to blame. So, the, hack, the reason management makes these decisions is you're the CEO of a company and you're pulling in $250,000 a year, and all you have to do is not screw up badly enough to get fired. In order to get into your three to five year time period to get to the next job, why on earth are you going to take any risk whatsoever? Yep, that's a good point. I mean, if you've got an answer to this, you'd be a very wealthy man. That's a good point. I mean, you know, the thing, the thing that is is killer is, you know, from what I've seen, security oftentimes. Well, why didn't you do this? The CEOs are viewed as public founders. They wouldn't be there. Yes, no longer. Boards are paid attention. InfoSec should be a good place for boards. But I think he made the point that's worth considering, but I don't think that it's a systematic thing. Do you think it's closely? Very much so. Okay. Very closely. It took about a year, year and a half. Yeah, what was the, there was one that was, I can't remember, was it Target that spurred some of that on? I think he went back to Yeah, that was kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I, see, I definitely see what you're saying. I mean, the, the blame gets thrown around all over the place, and it's kind of one of those things like, well, I hope it doesn't blame on me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's. The, the excuse has been used, in, in my experience, in pathetic instances. It's like, well, so, so I was running DLP, and I had an argument with someone else on the team, and they were, they were saying, well, we. That if you need to send stuff, you know, you need this thing to get encrypted. You know, throw, throw a Z in the subject line or whatever. There were people arguing against doing that because they were afraid it was going to affect people. Uh, you know, and, and I guess it's the marine in me that just says, I don't think that if you want to get pissed off, go right ahead. But I'm trying to do my job. I'm not trying to interfere with. Nevertheless, I have a job to do, and I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm not going to follow it and do what you need to do. Um, but yeah, no, I. And a lot of times, this this stuff where people are afraid about making people angry, it comes from keys that are external to security. Most of it. It's, it is oftentimes management where it's you know, the network key or you know, help desk. Um, that is good for people. Because a lot of times if we do screw up or we do piss people off, they're the ones that hear about it. Um, but, uh, well, anyways, this is another one. 
solution X is just as good as solution Y. Um, the guy from solution X says that it works better. Um, you know, the, the shit talking between vendors and, and solutions is something that I don't think there's a lot of it that goes on. And but when it is, when it does happen, it's you know, it's, it can be surreptitiously like, well, you can even do this such and such, which you know these other guys don't. You know, it's not a direct slam, but they're trying to get you to think of this other solution or vendor or whoever in a negative light. Um, and I, I've seen seen places where they're, they're they've made really poor choices based on the environment that they have. They've gone with solutions that are you know not. Not robust enough to handle the amount of business they're doing, um, or there are solutions that, in my opinion, just are not robust. To, uh, and, you know, I don't know if anybody else has seen this, but if you've ever seen somebody go with a certain solution, and you're like sitting there, like wondering, like, did they like pay so and so to like pick this? Because that's a horrible choice. And, you know, some of that's opinion, but at, at times, there are times where you look at something and go, that's way under power for what we can do here. And I don't know why we have that. Uh, or, or there's a much better solution that we even talk to the guys, we get a proof of concept with both of these places. This solution is clearly better, but for whatever reason, they're making the argument to go with this other solution. Um, just I think a lot of times Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of what, you know, Lonnie was saying. Yeah. So this is something you're going to notice on that. So is that a flawed process within the, the CS that we're saying, or is it less a lack of a responsibility here because it's a process that you need to take care of the where the people who are more or more easily your, your requirement Um, what I've seen is it gets swept under the rug. Right. I mean, you know, if they buy something and it sucks, uh, people are not generally inclined to bring it up. Um, you know, it's like walk in and they're like, yeah, we went with this. Even when it does get brought up, that's generally what happens. It's like, well, it's your fault. Well, it's not, it's their fault. Well, it's, you're not using it right. It's like, where does it end? But uh, a lot of times, you know, you, you, bring, you bring up something like that, that, that giant sore thumb, you know, that, you, that no one wants to talk about. And it's like, why the hell do you guys do that? Like, you pay how much for this light? You know, for like this much more, you could have gotten this other product. And they're like, oh yeah, this is what I do. Oh yeah. 
Well, we did a proof of concept. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that worked really well. But uh, who owns this version of the Yeah. Well, sir. Yep, exactly. And it's like, you know, you're getting saved from your marriage. Congratulations. Um, but now you've got a solution that can be shared with you for any reason. You can come to the Um. And then there's the, the other thing that I love is the digital body technology. Again, when you walk in, it's no time to lose. You walk in, and you can see where somebody tried to read the manual to install it, and it's all screwed up. What's that? I got one for the Ah, he's the night watch guy. The digital conversions. Uh, yes. So I think the way that the way that I help is by speaking up and being honest. Um, you know, and it's like what Lonnie said. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to make a sale. I know that you know we're going to do business. Uh, what I know is I'm going to do business with you more than once because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to call. You know, bullshit when I see it. You know, this system. It's not doing what you need. You know, it's undersized. You don't have the right personnel watching it. It's not configured right. Whatever it is, speak up. Um, but there's a we're, we're kind of running out. Well, There's a there's a document, um, and so we're going to get to what you're talking about, how we can fix these issues a little bit more in detail. But uh, meetings, I think meetings are where productivity goes to die. Most meetings that I have been to could have been handled with an email, and especially from the security portion, they, they want somebody from security there so they can ask you one thing. And you have to listen to all this other <laughs> crap that you don't care about. They ask you one thing, and you sat there for an entire 25 minutes to an hour. Hey, you're getting your hourly rate. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not complaining. <laughs> well, actually, I am because I have a lot of other crap to do. But, you know, <laughs> because there's like three of us. So, but the, the, the thing is, meetings, I think, are a big problem. You know, a lot of meetings should be. Meetings, I think, are, are overutilized. And one of the things that I think is uh, funny is you see people that, and I didn't realize this, I stumbled upon this while I was surfing through Reddit's intelligence uh, portion. Um, there's a declassified CIA document. That document outlined how operatives could undermine, organ undermine organizations uh, during World War II. It was from the OSS. So it was from the CIA was the OSS. Um, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll give it a shot. Let's see what we get here. There we go. So here we go. So there's. Two, two pages to this. Um, this is literally how they outlined how to undermine an organization. So a Nazi organization, this is what the OSS operatives would do to screw things up at the company level. Look at these and see if you've ever heard them. I literally that week heard exactly, word for word, one of these come out of somebody's mouth. And it was about, uh, oh, what was it, avoiding embarrassment. Guys. You know, we were installing a Palo Alto firewall, and and they're like, oh, we, we were done. Like, we had tested the rules with a, a span, 
the taps, and we were done. And these guys are sitting here. This guy who's not even a technical, doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's a finance student. And he's saying, oh, we want to be hasty. We don't want to look, we don't want to look bad. And like myself, a network, a network engineer, network architect are going, we're done. We do it now. It'll be fine. We've literally, using a span, we've run, we've run all live, we've run live traffic across these rules. And we've been seeing what's been getting blocked. We've been adding those to the rules below. The tap rule here, it shows us what's running through. And then the actual rule down here, we take what's running through here, we take what's here. Uh, yes, that's what I heard from Thomas Bray. He exposed organizations and companies being covered up, covered up, covered up. Yeah. So the security, the national security threat is our security system. Mm -hmm. It's a problem everywhere. I mean, haggle over precise wordings of communications, minutes, resolutions. I've literally seen that. Well, let's not look at it like that. We should say it like this. This is, this is, again, this is the CIA, the OSS in World War II. This document outlines how operatives would undermine Nazi corporations. I mean, you can look, you can look it up. Um, I've got the link if anybody wants it. You know, look at itself later. Um, it's section 11, page 28 of the document. But <laughs> I thought it was hilarious because I've literally seen most of these things in meetings. Uh, So, then, no one wants to make decisions. Pass the buck, pass the buck, pass the buck. That slows things down. Lack of individual initiative. People are like, well, I don't know what to do. They're thinking about what to do. Um, and then unclear project and meeting conditions. Uh, so from the Marine Corps, you can look at that. We're running out of time. But uh, it's called FAMSIS. It's an acronym. Apply it to business, which Harvard Journal says the Marine Corps is the best business school on earth. Uh, if you apply it to business, you have to make some tweaks because you're not going to kill people because uh, nobody's complaining. But it works. It gets stuff done. <laughs> 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 you gotta, gotta do it. Um, and then the other thing for the Marine Corps is you know, making sure that when you're in a project planning thing, meaning that you're looking for purpose, direction, and, and the motivation. The reason, the meaning, the will. You know, why are we doing this? How are we going to do it? And are you going to pay the money that's required? It's, you know, it comes down to like, do we have people to watch this stuff? Do we whatever? Um, but, <laughs> That's that's part of the solution is speaking up, you know, call it out when you see stuff that sucks, instead of just letting it run away with us. Um, we really have time. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So anybody have anything you want to say? Any questions? Not so much question, but something that that kind of addresses what you were talking about. Uh, we just won't know if it is or the user. What we usually do is we point back on site and say, do you have technology that can meet this policy? Oh, yeah, yeah, we got one of those. Oh, great. And what does your technology policy say that you need to do it? Oh, we can accept the user. Okay. What is the terminal that accepts the user to? The user says, and more often than not, you can kind of group them, you know, for the like endpoints that way. If you're wanting to monitor when that goes in, if they have, you know, they're allowed to go at lunch and maybe look at some websites and some fresh online, you know, that's fine, but running a business, probably not so much, right? So, you know, start directing, you know, from some of that stuff, or what we've, what we've done is point them to those kinds of policies internally if you've got them. If not, get them in place, you know, to help yourself, help save yourself from yourself at the end of the day, you know, because those kinds of things, you know, to have in policy, it's easier for management to deflect, 
So, I mean, there are little things like that, you know, that we kind of use to help, you know, maybe working with the answer and some of these solutions to help them, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, companies are going to do what they're going to do, right? And the management's going to do what they want to do. But I think it's that it comes down to appropriately showing them what they need to do in their purview and within their business to help accomplish their goals. Yeah. Thank you.